could you tell me anything about Fluffball? Um, yes. So the yes. Fluffball is my 501c3 that I founded, uh, and it's a nonprofit that raises money and awareness for a variety of uh, animal um, rescue organizations. So we just recently chose uh, Horses and Heroes, which is just outside of Ocala, Florida. And what they do is they take in Mindy Morrow, who runs the program and owns um, the organization. She brings in retired uh, show horses and um, works with young girls that come from different backgrounds, you know, different, difficult home lives, whether it be, you know, financially or emotionally and helps them out with it helps the families with like food and gas and things like that so that there's a train. you are out in the sticks i, I love that the <laughs> there's there's a train that runs often um and uh and helps them out with that and also runs a program where she teaches them how horsemanship and how to ride and all the things that go along with taking care of a horse and and uh you know the barn and that sort of thing and so these girls uh just have a place to go and to to be with each other and heal through that as well and uh, through that program all the girls that have stuck with it have all 100 percent of them have graduated high school and gone on to do uh things in the, whether it's the military or you know other careers uh, uh from that program so it's it's really cool i'm really excited to be working with her talent talk is sponsored by company of rogues actor studio New York-style training for actors at all stages of their journey. With our part-time classes and full-time masterclass program, Rogues provides a unique post-secondary option under the guidance of working professionals. Mentoring and developing professional film and theater artists since 1993, Calgary's longest-running independent studio offers practical hands-on classes in a positive, supportive environment. Check us out at corogues.com. Company of Rogues, passionate about the art of acting. Hey guys, welcome to Talent Talk. I am your guest host, Shingaze. Today we've got a great show. Why? Because it's a capital T on talent. Uh, we have an actor who has done way too much stuff to list. I will try and list it alphabetically during the show. Before we get to that, I'd like to thank some of our sponsors. This is our fifth season and our sponsors are Company of Rogues, Six Degrees, Workflow Films, RJ Talent, Heard of One Media, Counting Coup Indigenous Film Academy, and last but not least, Actra Alberta. Sure hope I haven't missed one of them. Anyway, so on to today's show. Today we have Miss Emmanuel Vauger. I don't know how we got her, but we got her. She's going to be here in three, two, one. Manuel, hello. <laughs> hello. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Oh, that's excellent. What? Oh, I'm fine. I'm okay. Where did we uh, where did we find you, by the way? Other than your place of kitchen, where are you? Uh, right now I'm in the I'm in the in the sticks. I'm in horse country, um, yeah, just outside of Vancouver at the moment. Okay, I know you're super super busy, right? You got this Hallmark thing coming out. Uh, I'm gonna look down at my notes to get the name just right. I know it says Big Sky, but that's only the first few words. Big Sky River. The bridal path. Guess what it's. Am I? So hey, before we get to uh, before we get to Big Sky River, the bridal path. Before I would like to talk about some seminal work that you've done. You've done so much, so much darn work. It's insane. Like leave something for the rest of us, is what other actors would say. I would never say that to your face, but if I could, uh, do you remember the character Monet? On. I'm not going to quiz you on Breaker High. Oh my gosh. I was like, Monet, Monet. Yeah, Monet. when? When was I? I, I, do, I do remember that because that, yeah. Yeah, I was squashing grapes with Tyler Labine and, uh, and Ryan Gosling. Exactly. And here's the funny thing. So like, um, 
I, I, uh, I, you know, I checked you out before having to do this. I'm like, let's go through some of her library of past things. The wife, of course, knows you a lot more, uh, you know, Smallville, stuff like that. I actually have like a, I can't figure out, there's a Christopher Reeve Superman there. I know. Oh, yeah, I that's see. That's not, it. it's a record. But, um, but I was looking through the stuff and we saw the Breaker High thing and it's actually available on YouTube. I watched it today today and here's the weird part i remember watching that because we were like sort of just starting to date and we literally watched breaker high and i don't know if it was just like there's like the, the prettiest cast i cannot think of a more pretty cast than those people on that show it was insane it was like watching baywatch and you watch like uh the street people the right. homeless people and you're like they're models oh, what are they doing in this <laughs> stupid show like anyway They've all got their shirts yeah. off and they're all, yeah, yeah, they've yeah. all, got, they've yeah. all got six packs. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or like my favorite, you ever watch a thing and they go, oh, it's a, they have a photo. It's a police photo. And they're like, hey, you mean this guy? It's a headshot. That is a headshot. <laughs> Do you ever see? Right. That? Yeah. Bug shot, which is, yeah, basically yeah. a black yeah. and white headshot with just a yeah. number. It's like, mm, wasn't yeah. in the budget. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is how we got the job anyway. So why not use it? Uh, yeah. Write it off. Oh, my goodness. Is there anything you'd like to talk about that doesn't involve Breaker High? Because um, I've just got a list of so many things that you've done. I, the, the world is your oyster. I it, it's a, right. whatever you want it to. It's a mixed bag. I am you know happy to talk about any of it. So all right, you know I'm back to your back catalog. And uh, as I was going through your stuff, I didn't realize. Forgive me uh, that you're an actor. No, I didn't realize that you had done uh, CSI New York for several seasons with Mr. Gary Sinise. So mm -hmm. I just watched the first one uh, earlier and I was like, okay, I'm gonna start watching this show. I hope nothing happens to your character. I hope you're fine in that show. I'm not gonna look, but I hope you're smiling. Uh, hey, how'd you get interested in acting? Uh, she dies, guys. She, she's, she doesn't make it. She doesn't <laughs> make it it's in slow motion shooting. It's like that scene from uh, Blade Runner. But anyway. Oh, speaking of not making it. So oh. yesterday, a friend of mine sends me my obituary that somebody, somebody had posted that I got. I, I was in a parking or a sorry, a, a car accident in a parking lot in a mall parking lot and passed away on July 30th, 2023. And then he sent me his obituary that somebody had posted, but his his one was dated August first, twenty twenty three. See, that'd like, be a lot scarier. You know, things that are like in the future, like yeah, I'm like I don't want to, you know, like don't start doing that crap. <laughs> but it was funny to me because I'm like, of all the really in a mall parking lot, that's how I go. Well, Come maybe on. it was like a maybe it was like a, Mar uh, a Neiman Marcus or something. It didn't have to be like a Walmart parking lot. Well, could, no, but it could be an upscale mall, mall period. Like, no, let's, let's like, I was, I don't know. Do you jumping never... out of a plane. Uh, <laughs> I was skydiving and oh no. <laughs> and saving two dogs from a burning plane That's... whilst doing it. There you go. See, now you, you get it now. <laughs> uh, I don't get much, but I did get that. Um, now. Okay. Hmm. Uh, that's frightening. You know what? Um, do you Google yourself? Have you ever, do you once in a blue moon, you're having a bad day, you're like, you know what? Let's see what they say about that particular role. Um, I Google myself on occasion only to check if there's any false information out there. Because sometimes Smart. there's stuff that will pop up that you're like, whoa, whoa, where'd that come from? And so just to like, just to kind of monitor that stuff. But okay. You know, I don't need to Google myself to know. <laughs> Other than like, I'll IMDb myself to remind myself. Like, I'm like, okay, did I, who did I work with on what project? Because they'll kind of connect you, like, you, you right. figure out who it was, where, when. And so, right, I'll right. Do it, it was Tyler Labine. It was Breaker High. Breaker anyway. High. <laughs> uh, so, um, oh, Lord. Hey, how did you, did I ask, um, how did you get interested in this whole thing, uh, being interviewed by us today? What was it? Uh, just an email, and he went, "Listen, no, no, uh, the acting thing. Where, where did that? Uh, 
Um, second grade, I started doing like really like elementary school. I started doing, uh, I did it like a school play and I really loved it and, you know, started doing more of that in school and, you know, told my parents. And, and at the time, like Vancouver was just starting to kind of grow their film industry. It was starting to, you know, you could have a little bit of a career. And, and I remember telling my parents that I wanted to do it. They're like, that's great. You don't have a car and you're not allowed to take the bus by yourself right now. Cause I was, I don't know, like nine. And um, they're like, when you can do that, cause they have, you know, jobs and things to, so that they could feed us. Um, right. Then you can, you know, pursue that if you want. Uh, so that was kind of the deal. And I, so once I was old enough to like take the bus by myself and go to auditions and do that stuff, I did that. Uh, and then when I finally got a job that paid enough so that I could buy myself a little used car, I did that. Then I could drive myself places. That was exciting. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, that's basically, that's how it started. Okay. Um, so they, <laughs> they were supportive, <laughs> but they gave you roadblocks. Uh, interesting. Yeah, they, they made me work for it. They made me work for it. They were not going to chaperone me around, and, and nor were they going to pay for someone to chaperone me around, oh, <laughs> which I know is something that happens now. But um, yeah, it was just not something that was in the cards, you know, until I was old enough to kind of do it on my own. Okay. Anyone else in the arts in the family? Nope. Nope. My That's mother was a nurse. My dad was in finance, and. Um, uh, actually, was an ar ar architect by trade originally, uh, and um, yeah, I I'm the only one in the in this crazy business. Uh, it is a little crazy, that's for sure. Okay. Um, speaking of uh, crazy, going crazy at home, I uh, the first thing I was looking up was your videos, uh, your YouTube channel, of which I guess you went nuts during lockdown. Is that a good? Whoa, whoa, whoa! Nuts is harsh. <laughs> oh, okay. I thought. I think you mean accurate. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, yeah, I was uh, a little stir crazy and mm -hmm. got bored. And you know, when you're locked in a in a space with and you're a performer, and you're a performer, and you want to do things and you want to be creative, you know, like so. Yeah, I did a few episodes of that. If I were on Ellen before, you know, things came out that maybe I didn't want to necessarily be on Ellen. Um, <laughs> Look, you didn't you didn't hold up a book and go, oh, I've been reading this book, my mentor, Harvey Weinstein. You didn't do that. It's just Ellen. And it's just, and you don't, you haven't met her. So you don't I know. Don't you know what? I love, I love her show. It was so mm -hmm. much fun to watch. And, um, you know, I did not have any sort of experience. I can't speak to that because I, I was not, I did not know her personally. So I yeah. enjoyed her show. And I enjoyed making a little, you know, a, a little bit of a, of a, a spoof of her show um, during lockdown. And then, you know, I bought a couple of sewing machines, made myself some clothes. <laughs> I'm like, people are like, didn't you start making your own clothes? I'm like, okay, oh, I right. made two things, two things. I did not make an entire wardrobe. <laughs> you're like, you're like, uh, you're like Gandhi. You're just over there with the loom. You're like, this is it. I'm done, guys, with commercialism. I'm just gonna. Um, I think I bought a bread maker for the better half. It's uh, it's still in the box. I have to sell that yeah. thing. Mm -hmm. um, did we do anything? Learn casual Spanish? No. Uh, no. Yeah. I don't know. It was uh, it was pretty relaxed. I grew a beard and got this hair down to here, the front. Nice. I pull it down here. I don't know what men say bangs. I don't know what a man is allowed to call a bang. Is it still a bang? Yeah, I guess it's still a bang or it's just long okay. hair at that point. Unless you have long the front of hair and you wear it down like that in front of your face, which is kind of more like um wants to frighten her. Cousin it. Like cousin it. It that's what I was like. I right. was like that Wednesday blah 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 whatever. Well, co yeah. well cousin it wasn't the hand. Hand is thing, cousin it. The hair. Cousin it with cousin the little, it. little mop over his head. Yeah. Hey, hey, parents not uh, loving me and letting the TV raise me. Boom. Score one for that. Uh, it's okay. <laughs> we'll cut that out. Uh, some of it later <laughs> when I start crying. Uh, I'm looking down at my notes. What do you, uh, where'd you get that hat? It's not part of here, but just while I'm doing this. Is this hat? A friend of mine sent it to me. Okay. Uh, Born hair don't care. I, I think it was probably a sentiment, like something to do with the fact that my hair was always in a hat and I'm always at the barn. And I, you know. You're a horsey lady, aren't you? 
Um, yes, I'm a, I'm a yeah. horsey. I'm a horsey girl. Yeah, you're a, yeah. Well, I said lady. I'm gonna I'm gonna be respectful. This isn't my show. Uh, I have to I'm be. I'm a horsey woman. Yeah, yeah, you are. Um, uh, I don't know why. I know how many horses do you have? I just have one. Is it one is Bunny? more than enough for me right now? <laughs> Painkiller Jane. You'd like that's a full on Marvel property. I got caught in my cord. Which I told you would happen, so don't get surprised. Uh, I think I can't remember the guy's name, Joe Palmetti. Pa oh, Joe Palmetti. Yeah, he probably created that darn thing on he page, did. anyway. Probably mm -hmm. great artist. So, what was? Can you speak to that at all? A little bit. Uh, yeah, I, I mean that was. Uh, I got to play a superhero, and and the prep for that was a ton of fun because it was like weapons training and fight training, and you know, uh, and that's my happy place you know I, I like at the time i loved all that stuff and i still i still do um but yeah i dove in head first with all of that, that stuff and and we shot for four weeks i think the pilot shot for four weeks and then they held on to it for like over a year trying to make a decision and and i think that yeah i i mean it was i think I've tried to revive that a few times now I mean, it's okay. it's kind of been kicking around for a while. Last I heard, they were doing something with it. I have no idea. I don't know. Okay. But I had <clears throat> I had a blast in the in the version that we did. We, mm -hmm. we all had a great time. I made some great friends and had a really fun time. Oh, that's awesome. See, I knew you'd be a person who uh, uh, makes friends. I make acquaintances uh, on film sets, <laughs> but I keep it business. Do you know what I mean? You keep it mm -hmm. business. You step off set. That's my time. Um. Okay. Hey, uh, how about, I was going to ask how you got that gig, uh, but maybe let's forget that or maybe use it and tell me about, like, are you still auditioning for things or are they kind of just like, look, here's the IMDB, but just give this woman the damn job. Sorry for swearing, but are you still out there doing that? Or are you taking calls and meetings? What are you doing? Um, both. I mean, it just depends on the project. Some stuff you still audition for. It depends on, you know, what it is. Uh, okay. And then there's some stuff that uh, I do not. Um, okay. So, you know, like it, it's, and it's also sometimes it's a, a matter of like, oh, they would like you to come and audition. Like sometimes it's like, they're, it's not even a question. Okay. It, it's an offer only sort of situation or they come in with an offer. And then other times, uh, you know, it's like, I don't know. What do you think? They'd like you to come in and read, or they'd like you to put yourself on tape, or whatever. What do you want to do? And then I, you know, then we make the call from there, depending on what the project is, depending on my level of interest in it, um, the material, all that stuff. What are the types of things? Uh, like you, you've you've done a hell of a lot of work now, and what what kind of thing would be like? Oh, you know, what would actually pique your? Is there something that you haven't been offered? You haven't done it enough? Just something? Um, yeah, I, I would, I would love to do another sitcom. That would be fun. Uh, I would love to, ooh, like, um, the, uh, Ryan, Ryan Murphy always has some fabulous fun shows and, you know, working on one of his shows would be, be pretty cool just cause I always, I, I always enjoy them watching them. Um, I love that Hollywood show. I don't remember the name of it unless it was Hollywood. And then I totally I remember the name of it. Called, I think it might have been called Hollywood. Yeah, yeah. The, like the Watcher recently. That was that was amazing. Like that was a lot of fun to watch. I mean, American Horror Story. Oh, we're only halfway through that. Yeah, actually, we're only halfway through the uh, the Watcher. Yeah, yeah. Feud was fabulous. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Feud, that. feud, feud. No, that's not Feud. Which, uh, is it? Who's in Feud? To, um, it is, would, it, is it the car thing? Is it with Stephen Ewan or something? That's not. No, no, no. Feud was, um, okay. wasn't it like S S Susan Sarandon? Uh, okay. Yeah, no, no, I'm sorry. No, yeah. no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. If it isn't that show, then we haven't seen it. Because no. there's a, a show with Stephen Ewan and this comedian. I don't know if she's an actress, but she was really good. Oh, it was like a bump into each other at cars and then just decide to ruin their lives. Uh, Oh, Netflix show. I didn't think it was his. About. Yeah. Somebody, What's the name somebody, like that? That's, that's a recent one. This is like yeah, maybe totally recent. Ago. Um, and it's it's a it's a period like it's a period piece. It's two okay. actresses. Um, oh my god, I'm blanking on all no, of it now. But I, I'll look it up later. It. It's really good. Okay. 
<laughs> uh anyway uh listen we're we're getting there man uh time wise i know uh it was limited and again mm -hmm. thank you so much for doing this um i'm gonna do until you go like this until you go okay let's practice that once let me see that let me see that okay was that it was that it or is that just a pre was that it are that you was saying you're done that's yeah. a pre thank you yeah i'm gonna try and <laughs> i'm gonna try and do that thing i never do with a scene or, partner or which is pay attention no. <laughs> no. Why? No. Um, do you still get nervous when you uh, do auditions? When you have to do auditions, you still get nervous. Um, no. Did you ever have nerves? It, it depends what it is. Sometimes, I mean, if I'm right, like at, in the last couple of years, because of lockdowns and all this stuff, a lot of stuff is just on tape, uh, which gives you the freedom, kind of, which I love because you can be anywhere in the world and be do and do that, so you don't have to be in LA. Um, right. And then, you know, and you, it just gives you freedom to have a life. Uh, so with that, it's, you know, you kind of, it's a little bit more laid back where you're like, okay, I don't have like that one shot at it in the room. And if I don't do it well the first time, they're not going to ask me to do it again or make an adjustment. They're going to be like, oh, that kind of, you know, she stunk up the room, whatever. If you're wow. nervous or whatever. Um, so I do like it for those reasons, but I do miss going into the room in the sense of like, meeting people face to face and that energy that you have in a room, I think mm -hmm. says a lot. So it's like people get a real sense of who you are and, you know, if they want to work with you or if they, you know, if, or if they're like, well, I don't really like that person or she, she reminds me of my ex-wife. I don't want to work with her. Whatever. Wow. You know? My soon to be ex-wife. Oh awesome. You know, whatever, whatever. Okay. It might be. <laughs> Understood. Now I, uh, yeah, the, 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 the amount of nerves I have going into the room, uh, is equal and and opposite returns of what you get in the room after and before your audition. I might stink up the audition, but I ain't stinking up the room. You go in, you have a voice, you have a look, you have an attitude, you are quick, you ask the right question, you do a shitty audition, there's still an okay chance they might bring you back. So that's something you don't get on a tape. You know, you just send the tape and you're like, oh, that's an interesting choice. Not for us, but you don't get redirected. Anyway, but it's it's so nerve wracking. Yeah, uh, there's good right and bad. Before. Yeah, I agree with you. Mm -hmm. Nerve wracking. Mm -hmm. uh, before we let you go, uh, could you tell me anything about fluff ball? Um, yes. So the yes. fluff ball is my five hundred one c three that I founded, uh, and it's a nonprofit that raises money and awareness for a variety of uh, animal um, rescue organizations. So we just recently chose uh, Horses and Heroes, which is just outside of Ocala, Florida. And what they do is they take in Mindy Morrow, who runs the program and owns um, the organization. She brings in retired uh, show horses and um, works with young girls that come from different backgrounds, you know, different difficult home lives, whether it be, you know, financially or emotionally and helps them out with, it helps the families with like food and gas and things like that. So that there's a train. You are out in the sticks. I, I love that. The <laughs> there's, there's a train that runs often um, and, uh, and helps them out with that and also runs a program where she teaches them how, horsemanship and how to ride and all the things that go along with taking care of a horse and, and uh, you know, the barn and that sort of thing. And so these girls, uh, just have a place to go and to to be with each other and heal through that as well. And uh, through that program, all the girls that have stuck with it have all, 100% of them have graduated high school and gone on to do uh, things, in the, whether it's the military or, you know, other careers uh, uh, from that program. So it's, it's really cool. I'm really excited to be working with her. Wow. Well, congratulations on that. Thank Amazing. You. Okay. Not just a lady who wears a hat living out in the woods and sometimes sits on horses. There's so much more to you. Um, <clears throat> listen, I I don't know. Is there anything? I have a tip for tip for the young people coming in. Just one last thing. That I'm gonna. Uh, tip for the young people coming in. Um, yeah, anything or advice you would have given yourself when you were like 15. Either way. Uh, yeah. Be, uh be on time. I mean, this is stuff that I was told when I was when I was starting out as well. Be on time. Be respectful to everyone you meet. Every everyone from you know your producer, director, people at the top to the person that is 
going and getting you coffee because you don't, you know, everyone is, is, is there to help, you know, the, uh, everything run smoothly and you don't know what those people are going to be doing. And, and people are people treat everyone with respect. Uh, keep like, don't give up, keep doing your thing, studying, expanding your horizons and whatnot, you know? Uh, yeah, just keep going. That's all I can really say, you know, just don't give up. Just keep going. because It's a long road. And if you can think, I, I said this not today on something else. Um, if you can think, I mean, this business is a difficult business. If there's other things that you would rather do, then go do, if you can see yourself doing other things, go do those things. If you can't see yourself doing anything else and this is what you love, then, then fine. Okay but it's not easy and it's, it's, you know, it may seem like it in the beginning, you might hit and get something and whatever. And it's like, Oh my God, everything. And then you'll, you know, and it, it's this the whole time. Um, and that's just the nature of the beast at, okay. at any level, I think, you know? Okay. So. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so now I'm going to do that thing that I work on less than intros and it's an outro. Thank you again. Thank you for, uh, for joining us. Okay, here we go. Hey guys, uh, thanks for watching Talent Talk. That was Miss Emmanuel Vaugier. I was Chingay's. You were seated there. Uh, join us next week. It's going to be Gary. He's going to be more professional than this, but he won't have a more professional actor. I can tell you that. We'll cut that part out. Thanks again, guys. Take care. Ciao. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. Okay? Thank you. Take care. All right. Take Ciao. care. Bye.